Hey everyone, National Master Sean Lay here, and in today's Phil Door video, I'll be showing you what to do when your opponent plays the exchange boring variation in the Phil Door, and how you can get an advantage if your opponent doesn't know what they're doing. Alright, let's get straight into it. Alright, so uh, the exchange variation of the Philidor is, well, a pretty boring variation if you don't know what you're doing as black, and also if you don't know what you're doing as white. But I've come to realize, and from a lot of um, high grandmaster games that I've looked at, that the exchange variation is actually much better for black actually. Especially if, again, white doesn't know what they're doing, which they probably don't because they're playing the exchange variation, which already gives black a small advantage going into the middle game. Now you might be thinking, Sean, what do you mean a small advantage? Well, let me show you this. After e5, what do you do after captures captures? And so in this position, the computer evaluation already gives it a slight advantage for black. And you might be wondering, how is that even possible? The knight on d7 looks much worse than the knight in c3, and the bishop on c8 can't come out unlike the bishop on c1. Well, the main reason why this is actually better for black, even though white has an extra move, knight, uh, white's knight looks better, is well, in reality, this knight is actually well better placed than our opponent's knight. And you will come to realize this when um, you get better and better, and you come to realize that, you know, having a knight on c3 and f3, even though this looks cool, and as a beginner, this is something very normal that you guys, you know, know and you guys play, one thing you want to do in the future is have the knights support each other, just like in the field of the defense like this. And the reason why is they can help each other out. And another main reason is, let's say our opponent plays something like bishop e3, we can play this bishop b4 move, and our opponent cannot respond in kind. They can't really play bishop b5, trying to pin our knight, well because of the very simple reason we can kick the bishop away. And when the bishop moves somewhere here, we have the opportunity to just take on e4, because the knight is pinned to the king. And so this is where the advantage lies, because we can pin our opponent's knight, and our opponent cannot pin ours. And so in this position, if our opponent's a little bit, well, unaware, well then they get into a lot of trouble because this pawn just falls, right? As I just showed you, you can take on e4. And just like in normal Philidor positions, your plan is still to take on e4, just a little bit differently. You're not going to play, well, like c6 pawn b5 very often, in some positions you do, but in a, lot, in a lot of them, you actually don't need to because there are better plans to go for. And if you've seen my speedrun videos, a lot of people have actually taken on e5, and I'll be teaching you how I play against those as well. So let's say our opponent plays bishop d3, and this is where the very important move comes in. Now, again, it, I'm just going to be showing you basic ideas. You could do this after like bishop d3, and you can play bishop b4. You could do this if your opponent plays, I don't know, queen e2, and you play bishop b4. Now the only thing you can't do is if your opponent plays a3, but a3 is not a very good move because, well, it does stop the pin, but we, we can just put the bishop on c5, and, and this is these positions are still very good for us as well. But the main focus of today's video is what to do after, like, as I said, the bishop b4 variation, and our opponent lets us, and they defend e4, because if not, you just win it. So what do you do in this position over here? What I really like to do is you're just going to take the knight, and you might be thinking, Sean... Don't you not want to do that? Because aren't bishops better than knights? Well, there's a couple of reasons why in this position in particular, this is actually much better for us and why I particularly enjoy this. And the reason why is, first of all, well, these double pawns are pretty big problems for our opponent over here. And our opponent doesn't really want to have this problem. And the second of all, that bishop on f8, well, you guys probably know it is the bishop on e7 in most of the Philidor. And it's our bad bishop. And we know that because most of our pawns are on dark squares here. So we actually don't want to, well, keep it. So we're okay with exchanging this. And now the idea of this entire opening is instead of attacking e4, because our opponent's probably going to defend that pretty well, we're going to try to take control of c4 and attack c3, maybe c2, maybe a2. And that's going to be our game plan for the rest of the game, essentially. So what we can do is we can play a move like queen e7, defending this guy over here. Let's say our opponent castles, we can just castle. Let's say, I don't know, your opponent plays queen d2, looks normal enough. And now we can play this knight b6 move. And the idea is, well, our opponent can never really play a move like pawn c4, because that's just a huge weakness on c4, and he relegates the bishop as a big pawn. Like, what, what is it actually doing? It's doing absolutely nothing, so you don't want to have a bishop like that. And so, like, what does our opponent do? Now, 
Our opponent can try to play something like a4, but that can be annoying for our opponent because, again, um, we have many different ideas that we can go for here. We can play c5, we can play a5. Again, you, there's a lot of things that you guys can do, and it's up to you guys to determine what you want to do. Again, these are all weaknesses, and how you attack them is up to you. So, I'm going to give you guys an example now of what could happen. Let's say our opponent doesn't play bishop b3, but instead they try to play like bishop g5, we play here, they play bishop d3, we capture, capture. Let's say they play h, we play h6, they capture, we capture back with the queen because our knight wants to go to b6. Our opponent castles, we castle, and let's say they play queen e2 because they're protecting e4 and they're defending the c4 square. Now our plan can come in very easily. We're just going to move over here. And let's say our opponent plays rook e1, you know, open foul and stuff like that. We can play bishop e6. And the main idea of bishop e6 is not that we're going to threaten this pawn. Like our opponent's probably going to defend it somehow. Let's say they play rook b2 or something. Well, the main idea of this opening is now we can provoke a weakness. A lot of you guys have been asking me, um, how do you create weakness, right? Because in a lot of the games I show you guys, well, most of the people create weaknesses themselves. But how you create weaknesses is by playing moves like pawn c5, threatening to go for, well, pawn c5 ourselves, trapping the opponent's bishop. So our opponent is forced to move the pawn up over here, which is not a move they want to do because now c4 is really weak, the bishop's really weak, the dark squares are weak, and now there's a lot of different things we can do to attack our opponent now. We can play moves like rook d8, we can may even play this sometime after this knight moves. We can even play bishop g4 at this point, say, hey, if it's a good knight versus a bad bishop, I'm down to do this. And this is completely better for us already. So, again, the main idea in the exchange variation here is that we're able to play bishop e4 and win the opponent's pawn structure. So what do you do if your opponent doesn't let you do that? What if your opponent just says, hey, I'm a good player, I'm going to play a3, even though a3 is not very good. Now here you can just play bishop c5. Again, bishop e7 and play a normal Philidor is completely fine, but I like bishop c5 for the main reason while the bishop is very active here, right? And if your opponent ever plays here, just play h6, get him to tap g u, and then just your queen's very nice. If not, that's completely fine. You can play moves like knight here, knight g6, attacking the bishop to kick it over here. Make sure you defend the e5 pawn a little bit. And these positions are very easy to play. Let's say here, say your opponent plays here, you just castle, your opponent castles. Now we can play c6, b5 if we want. We can play a5 first just to make sure he can't play b4. And again, we're just going to go for queenside dominance, get a lot of space on the queenside. And what is our opponent going to do? He doesn't want to play a move like bishop e3 because that trades off our bad bishop or his good bishop. So where does the bishop want to go? g5 to trade off for a knight? Probably not because that's his good bishop. So where does this bishop actually go? If it just goes to d2, I wouldn't even call this a particularly good bishop. We can play c6, b5, rook b8, b4. Attack e4, like our life depends on it. Some positions we can pull back, play knight c5, and it's very simple play in the exchange variation. And there's nothing really to be afraid of here. It's all on you to make the plays, and if you don't want to make any plays, if you're just lazy and don't want to do anything, you can just put your pieces on nice looking squares and just call it a day. Don't recommend you guys do that, but it's always a possibility when you play a flexible system like the Philidor. Now, if you guys have any questions about the Philidor, I think this will be the end of my series. Um, I think that's all there is to talk about and the basic forms of the Philidor. Now, I will be um, playing a lot more Philidor games, whether it's, it's in my speedrun. I'm thinking of doing a speedrun with just only Philidor games, white and black, because um, a lot of you guys are enjoying it and a lot of you guys want to learn. Again, I'm not a, well, I'm not a Philidor master. There are some top GMs who do play Philidor, like Duda, who I recommend you go check out his games. That's where I learn a lot of my own Philidor strats. And if you guys enjoyed this video, make sure to like and subscribe. I'll see you guys in the next video. Hopefully this is the last video I make before we get to 1,000 subscribers. We're so close to the milestone. I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.